Uh, happiness is a very important but very difficult question uh, because it's very hard to measure and to know whether one person is happier than another. Many people have a um, simplistic view that happiness is linked to power, that as humans gain more power, they use their power to overcome all kinds of problems and to realize their dreams and therefore they inevitably become happier. And, but this doesn't really work like this. It is certainly true that humans have become more and more powerful as history evolved, but power is not easily translated into happiness. And there are many big revolutions in history that increased human power without probably increasing human happiness. For instance, in the agricultural revolution uh, about 10,000 years ago, humans gained immense new powers. They gained control of various species of plants and animals like wheat, like rice, like chickens, like cows. And this gave them the power to start building cities and kingdoms and empires and multiply and, and conquer uh, many new territories around the world. But there is no indication that the individual human being became happier as a consequence, just the opposite. Uh, there are many indications that the, even though the collective became more powerful, the individual peasant had a worse life than the individual hunter-gatherer 20 or 30,000 years previously in the Stone Age. Uh, the typical peasant in ancient Egypt or ancient China had to work much harder than a hunter-gatherer. Uh, the human body and, and human mind evolved in adaptation to the life of hunter-gatherers. Uh, for millions of years, what humans did was go to the forest, climb trees, look for mushrooms, run after rabbits, things like that. And suddenly, with agriculture, the typical peasant, what he or she had to do all day was dig canals and be bring water in buckets from the river and harvest the corn and grind the corn. These were types of work which were much more difficult for the human body and much more boring to the human mind. And in exchange for all the hard work, people actually got a worse diet. Hunter-gatherers lived by eating dozens of different kinds of animals and plants and mushrooms and berries and fish and whatever. Most peasants in agricultural societies subsisted by eating very, a very small number of crops or even just a single crop. Like if you were a Chinese peasant, you would eat just rice for breakfast and rice for lunch and rice for dinner for years and years. It's very poor nutrition. So nutrition got worse, work became more difficult, and you had much more social inequality and exploitation and oppression than before. Hunter-gatherer societies were relatively egalitarian without big differences between different people. Agricultural societies uh, became hierarchical with very small elites of kings and priests and noblemen controlling and exploiting the masses of the peasants and, and, and simple people. So from all these perspectives, the increase in human power did not lead to an increase in individual happiness. Over the last 200 years, for the first time, we see real improvement in the life of the average person, like the average Chinese uh, uh, peasant. Over the last 200 years, we see a decrease in uh, epidemics, a decrease in famine, a decrease in violence, and a rise in life expectancy. Uh, so the last 200 years, from this perspective, we finally see some correlation between power and happiness. But at the same time, we also see much more negative developments, whether it's the destruction of the ecological system around us, whether it's the disintegration of families and communities. For thousands of years, humans lived, millions of years actually, as social animals uh, whose life centered around a network of family members and community members. And human happiness to a large degree depends on the strength of these family and community relations. But since the Industrial Revolution, 
in the industrial and post-industrial world, families and communities are disintegrating, and people today are lonelier and more alienated than in any previous time in history. And at the same time, people are also losing their sensory abilities. We are losing the ability to hear, to smell, to, uh, to see, and to pay attention to the world around us. As a hunter-gatherer or even as a peasant, you needed to be very, you needed to have very sharp senses and to be very aware of everything that is happening here and now. If you didn't have sharp senses and if you wasn't, if you weren't aware of the here and now, you, would, you couldn't survive. Uh, people living in the modern world, they don't need this. And, and we see a decrease in sensory abilities, and we see a decrease in the ability to pay attention. So paradoxically, the world is becoming more gray, uh, more dull. And from this perspective, li the life of the average person today in the modern world is poorer than the life of hunter-gatherers 20,000 years ago. So it's... So you see that there are good developments, of course, but it's very difficult to say uh, categorically that yes, people today are happier than they were 20,000 years ago. Uh, do you have a favorite science fiction writer? Uh, Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley, yeah. Yes, but I think that Brave New World is the best science fiction yeah. novel of the 20th century uh, because he really managed to see beyond the confines of his time. He was writing in the early 1930s, uh, where everybody were very concerned about totalitarianism, about communism in Russia and fascism in Italy and the rise of Hitler in Germany. And people, you have like, like, like the dystopias of George Orwell's 1984, which envision a totalitarian world with secret police and torture and all that. And Huxley was able to see beyond that and to envision the consumerist society of the 21st century. Uh, in his vision, there is no secret police, there is no totalitarian regime, there is no brutality. Everything, happiness is the main value. The entire world is geared towards uh, pleasure and towards happiness, not towards suppression and, and oppression. Um, he basically envisioned a world built on sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And it's fascinating. I mean, technologically speaking, Brave New World is completely outdated. He didn't know anything about genetics, about artificial intelligence. So from a technological perspective, it's, it's very primitive science fiction. But philosophically speaking, I think... Nobody has tackled these issues of what does it mean um, to use technology to create paradise on Earth? And what does it mean to set human happiness as the highest goal? What are the implications? Nobody has discussed these issues better than, than Aldous Huxley in, in, in the recent century.